Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are finally getting up underneath the old C10. We're calling Dale, so stay tuned. That's right guys, we finally come up with a name for the old C10, the Scottsdale, the Chevy truck, and it is Dale. As you saw on my Instagram, we had well over a hundred voters on trying to figure out the name of this truck and at the end of the day it was a very close tie between Scotty and Old Yeller but Dale came out ahead. We're calling it Dale for Scottsdale. Let's get underneath and see what kind of shape this truck is really in. So we are going to start at the front and work our way to the back and guys there's lots to see here and I for one am not disappointed in the condition of this truck couple of things that we're going to see is we're going to see some leaking oil we're going to see a leaky radiator other than that good old-fashioned dry New Mexico rust which is just on the surface but there are a couple of issues that we already know about and that's the rocker panels as well as the cab corners but let's start right up front here by looking at the underside as you can see up through here the rad support is good and dry even still has black paint on it and the front of the frame, the leading edge of the frame, is in really good shape. All these front end components, we're going to be switching out anyways, because when we do get the drop kit in, yes, I said drop kit. The other day, I ordered a complete front and rear drop. We are going six inches in the rear and four inches in the front. That means we've got to change the coils, spindles. We're likely going to go through the front end parts, ball joints, tie rods, all that sort of thing. Uh, and replace all that while we're in here. But today is kind of the precursor to doing that. Let's check out, see what the rest of the bushings and the rest of the front end parts look like and down and back and see what it is we may have to order to make that kit happen. When we walk up here, you'll see that the power steering lines are leaking a little bit, therefore dripping down. And uh, that looks like a fairly new steering box. I can't say for sure, but uh, my guess is, is that maybe something that was replaced not too long ago. As we come by here, we look at the original spindles. These ball joints on the control arms up top were originally pressed in with rivets. And guys, this still has riveted ball joints on the uppers on both sides. Which leads me to believe that the 80,000 miles that this truck is showing on the odometer could quite literally be the actual mileage. Cross members in really good shape. Looks like a front main seal leaking up there. We come back and of course the oil is dripping down over the starter and uh, from the base pan, I'd say the rear main seal might be leaking as well. Um, exhaust Y pipe is in good shape, but eventually we'll be changing that as well. And look at the inside of that frame up in there. Still has paint on it, guys. A couple of things I wanted to check was the condition of the control arm bushings. This one here doesn't look too bad. A little bit of cracking in there. This one split up pretty good. And the uppers don't look much better. So chances are we'll likely be replacing the bushings, but I'll probably compare that to replacing the whole control arm, upper and lower, versus the cost of the bushings and having them, you know, pressed in, pressed out. From what I understand, you can get control arms fairly inexpensive for these two-wheel drive trucks. Now, when I was looking at the coil springs, I thought that they had been hacked. They look like replacements. They do have some writing on them. They are not the original springs, but the kit that I've got ordered has everything coming springs included. We come back here to these uh, cross supports uh, in the floor. The floor looks like it's in really good shape and uh, I'm happy about that. I don't want to be replacing floor, plant, floor pans in this thing. Cab mounts look good. But if we come over here to the rear, you'll see that the cab corner is rusted through right there. That plug probably would pop right out of there. And just this one little section, let's see if you can see it there, but just that one little section of the inner rocker is bad. So that should be a real easy repair. Shouldn't have to replace the whole thing. We get a better look at the inner rocker on this side and same thing. Just a little bit of a mess there, but as we roll up, everything is still in really good shape. And like I said before, cab corners and rocker panels will be replaced. Now, when we had out for a drive the other day, we did notice a slight shake under acceleration, and I think I can see why. 
the rubber in that steady bearing looks like it's all broke up, so we may have to end up replacing that. We come back here, the muffler has got some holes in it, and the tailpipes have been cut off. You can see the big eight pack of springs. This thing did have the heavy half ton option on it, which also gives us the bigger differential. So that's gonna come in handy when we add some horsepower to this thing. Backing plates are in really good shape back here. And when we were bleeding the brakes, you can see where it's all been leaking down. Even the bleeder screws came out with no issues. While we've got it up in the air, we will be adjusting the rear brakes because as it sits right now, when you apply the brake, it seems like the rear is what's grabbing. They lock right up on you. So we're gonna have to back those off just a little bit. Go up to the inner fenders back here. Everything's in good shape. The back bumper looks brand new or fairly new. The bracket still got some black paint. And uh, yeah, this trailer hitch will be coming off. I don't need a trailer hitch for this truck. Besides, if we're gonna lower it, we don't need this thing any lower to the ground than necessary. Don't want things dragging. So as you can see up there, somebody put these extended uh, shackles on it and the springs are hitting the bottom of those box ribs. It's happening on both sides. They used a Western chassis lift. You can see the WC carved uh, or cut out in the shackle itself. And we're gonna be using the Belltech front and rear and it comes with a flip kit and the C-notch. If you don't know what a flip kit is, let me explain it to you. In order to get yourself the drop that you want, right now the axle sits underneath the spring pack. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking the springs down and running them underneath the axle, which then puts the axle up closer to the frame rail. And by doing that, you, effect, you effectively are gonna lower your truck probably somewhere in the vicinity of about four to five inches. You can see the difference right there. With that, we're gonna put the axle a lot closer to the frame and that frame will then be coming into contact with this likely. So the kit involves cutting a C-notch in the frame with a big steel reinforcement plate that bolts in. You could weld it in, you could do whatever you want. Uh, all these little things here are riveted, so we're going to cut those rivets out and then uh, get the frame cut with these things put on. The box will have to come off, and this is something that I can probably do at home, so I may not be doing that right here at the shop uh, because I do want to get the truck back home and in the garage so that when I want to work on it, I don't have to come clear out here. Besides, in a lot of the cases, anytime that we're doing work on our own vehicles out here in the shop, all we have is the weekend. So if it runs over due to a missing part or you need the wrong, or you got the wrong part or something like that, well, we don't want to be tying up a bay with this thing all tore apart. This hoist is our money maker. Can't tie that up forever. This type of a job is very, I don't want to say very easy. It's an easy job and can be done on the ground with uh, maybe the help of a buddy, you could have this done probably in the, uh, in the back here in, uh, in a couple of hours. So it's not that big of a deal. The worst part is gonna be cutting that frame. Up front here, we're gonna be replacing the actual spindle itself. As you can see right in there, that's where the spindle comes out in the middle. When you buy the lowering spindles, that raises up a couple of inches in the front to effectively put your wheel and tire set up further up into the fender well. Comes with all new shocks, new coil springs. And I'm also going to be looking for uh, some new control arms and bushings, like I said earlier in the video, to try and uh, make sure that the front end is 100% tight. Once we get the kit installed, we can then send it off to the alignment shop and only have to deal with that once. So right now I'm gonna adjust those rear brakes. We'll get it back down on the ground and we'll close out this video. So this is the point in the video where we get ready to close things off and for whatever reason, once again, my microphone quit working. I forget what I was talking about here, but I know at some point we're going to be talking about the demise of Bubbles t-shirts and how they are a limited quantity and they're not going to be around forever. If you want to get one in time for Christmas, now is the time to order. And our regular t-shirts are always available. Remember to always stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. Guys, I love you. God bless. We'll do it again real soon.